Welcome to the final part of Last of Us. Now I'm going to shut up because uh, it's a plot. Shit. Here we go. Welcome to the Fireflies. It's Marlene. I was going to call her Daisy by accident. <laughs> She's all right. They brought her back. <laughs> Ellie's fine. She drowned, but they you brought her back. All this way. How'd you do it? Come closer. Come closer. <clears throat> she fought like hell to get here. Come closer, punches. Come closer. Mama, me, mama. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was until that to the one I love. <laughs> so the soldiers worked for the fireflies. In the country. I pretty much lost everything. And then you show up, and somehow we find you just in time to save her. Maybe it was meant to be. All this shit again. Take me to her. You don't have to worry about her anymore. We'll take care. I worry. Just let me see her, please. You can't. She's being prepped for surgery. The hell you mean surgery? The doctors tell me the cordyceps, the growth inside her, has somehow mutated. It's why she's immune. Once they remove it, they'll be able to reverse engineer a vaccine. A vaccine. But it grows all over the brain. It does. Find someone else. There is no one else. Listen, you were gonna show me where- Stop. I get it. But whatever it is you think you're going through right now is nothing to what I have been through. I knew her since she was born. I promised your mother I would look after her. Then why are you letting this happen? Because this isn't about me, or even her. There is no other choice here. We went to college together. In high school. Telling yourself that bullshit. And we graduated. Joel one, Firefly zero. He tries anything, shoot him. I'm talking to Joel. Don't waste this gift, Joel. Get up. I said, get up. I get down. <laughs> Disco ball drops down. We thought this would calm me down. Go on. Move. I said, move. Getting real sick of you. Give me an excuse. Which way? What the fuck are you doing? Keep walking. I said keep walking. Where is he? Eat him. <laughs> I ain't got time for this. Where? Joel. Joel, that's just unfair. Floor the far end. Atta boy. Well, we got a new mission. We actually have to save Ellie now. <laughs> Wait, the backpack had everything on it still. Of course. <laughs> so, from what I can understand, the surgery is going to kill Ellie. Well, because it's all throughout her brain. They would have to remove her brain to be able to get a culture to be able to create a vaccine. So we're presented with a very debated conundrum of this story. Would we save Ellie... A character we care about, but we would basically remove humanity's ability to fight and have a have a treatment and vaccine for this illness, or do we sacrifice her for the well-being of the entire planet? Joel's decided to go with the former. Oh boy. 
hope it doesn't come down to like a choice thing for Ellie in the end. It's totally gonna come down to that, isn't it? That's the only hit you'll get on me. Now, the areas around here is pretty tough because a lot of the enemies around here are, have armor on them. Your best trick on here, use your environment and mobility to your best ability. Like, if, if I get noticed, I usually run a few rows back. And usually they lose me in that shuffle. And just focus on taking them down one at a time. Go check over there. Shit. <laughs> Shit. God. I even upgraded the range on this thing. He knows I'm in that room, so if I change rooms, it should be okay. Woo! But honestly, if you had a choice like that where you... Would you be willing to sacrifice someone you love to save the world, or would you say screw the world and save the one you love? That's a not an easy choice to make. Depends on which family member for me. <laughs> well, we're talking about someone you <laughs> care for deeply. <laughs> you know, since I'm not going to get 100 pills, I decided to get Los Simos Distance maxed out, which is really good for this part. Now I have Biaku gone. That is a good question. So I'm not going to think about that. <laughs> if I'm honest, if it's this world versus Ellie, I see why Joel's picking Ellie. And see, this also is what somewhat divides people about what's going on in this game. Just because some people think, hey, we're being selfish here. We're being the bad guy here. For saving Ellie, we basically fucked the world to stay the way it is. Keep in mind, Tess did say we're shitty people, Joel. Yep. And I told you, Joel's not a good guy. <laughs> Obviously, these people aren't either, so. Weird moral gray area. As much as I think people would like to say that I'd be willing to sacrifice someone I love to save the world, I don't think people in the situation would necessarily be that pious. I'd like to think they would be, but I know if it came down to the decision for me, I wouldn't sacrifice like my most loved one to save the world. There's a difference between being asked the question and having to make the decision. Exactly. If it was my loved one, no, but if it were me, I would cough myself up. What the hell? You'd cough yourself up? <laughs> yeah, if, I, if it was me that had the vaccine in me. You, you would take the burden? Yeah. The thing is, it's hard to say that Ellie is aware of what's happening to her because she's been knocked out and put in the situation where she's having surgery, so... It doesn't necessarily feel like it's her choice, but would she make that decision and sacrifice herself to save the world? That hasn't been answered. Maybe this is what she wants. He gets to her room. Ellie, I'm here to save you. No, Joel, I, they told me the procedure. I'm ready. Oh, well, I killed all these guys on the... I killed everyone <laughs> in the hospital. Ah, uh, wow. All right. <laughs> I mean, wow. <laughs> and wow. And <laughs> wow. <laughs> I killed, I killed those guys. And wow. Also seems a little bit late in the game, but a lot of these enemies are carrying a weapon that you can only get at this part. It's basically a semi-automatic rifle. I was hoping it would all be flamethrowers. Everyone has flamethrowers. Yeah. Those are expensive, man. I fucked, I fucked the world. And my... <laughs> See, I like how you mentioned that this story has been very kind of incongruent to like a story developing, more of a character developer. As I mentioned at the very beginning of this particular Let's Play is that this takes a lot of influence from Westerns. Westerns are a lot like that. They are character devoted. They don't really... F the, the stories in, like, even, like, revenge plot stories are a good example, are very simple plots. 
I mean, our the simple plot with this one is we're just trying to get Ellie to this location. That was the story, pretty much. What happened in the story, though, is was the meat and potatoes of it, the characters. And uh, there's a lot of characterizations to that, to westerns, samurai films, revenge films. That's why there's a little bit of a country twang guitar to everything, and definitely has a, a drier sense of a very, very hushed and minimalistic to the music, the way it's shot. But it gives this very gritty, realistic feel to it. That's why I like it. It's very, it's very dark, and also makes you think. Without going the Matrix route of being dark and making you think. Well, that's just making you think by confusing you. There's a difference. <laughs> Besides, all credibility died when the second and third movies came out. I don't, you know, as much as people, you know, dis those, I really did like the first one a lot. I think the first one's really good. I don't know what we're talking about the Matrix. <laughs> I didn't love the first one. I thought it was all right. That was a really good action movie. But two and three just totally feel like, well, the first one worked. Alien dreadlock twins. Oh, God. And uh, let's confuse those ideologies by uh, making everything maybe. <laughs> See, the LD Alba helps a lot with those armor piercers, because even with these people with, like, Kevlar, I'm tearing them apart with it. And again, use your mobility. First time I did, I did this, I died a number of times because I wasn't utilizing my environment as much as I'd like. But you keep moving. These guys just don't know what to do with themselves. <laughs> it's okay, I'm a doctor. <laughs> Let me start the incision, pal. <laughs> and pal. And pal. <laughs> this guy's gonna walk around the corner. And pal. I'm really hunting them. I do hope there isn't a safe for me to operate on. Mm -bop Gonna shoot you. Dead. <laughs> See, uh-oh. Reinforcements. Oh, God. Run. Get some distance. This is my distance now. That guy dropped a gun, too. The last gun you can pick up in the game. Assault rifle. Because you really needed it. Not a very good gun. Like, I don't like it that much. For me, it kind of depends on the game. Like, in Borderlands, I'm not all that crazy about assault rifles, but in every other game, I like them. What I don't like about this one is I feel like I waste more bullets using it. Like, you get a lot of them. <laughs> it, but, ah, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, if someone threw a heavy thing covered in nails at me, I'd probably react in a similar manner. Yeah, I'm pretty sure one of the scissor parts pierced them a little. After the explosion. After the explosion. Just the one scissor part. <laughs> ah, the other one worked too, clearly. <laughs> Nail bombs are awesome. Also, a big thing that I focused on with this character, and it helps at this point, is the increased weapon stability. Gives much more of a point-and-click feel to it. Fan out, Fan out two of us! <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Pop goes the weasel, say the weasel go, blah. Watch this. Surprise! <laughs> Get off my shoulder! <laughs> I mean, elbow! Now, oh, fake being dead. Oh, God, more guys? Come on. <laughs> Haven't you learned your lesson? Eat a brick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, he's in the room, Ron. <laughs> he stole his stuff! Aww. I wanted that. Thank you. I have a crafting speed of level two. I thought, can I have a craft macaroni and cheese? <laughs> <laughs> the blue box blues. Jim, you're an adult. You don't need to ask me. <laughs> you could just have it. My life. Uh, actually, no. Those are we don't have a lot of craft, so let's split it. 
We have a lot of crap. <laughs> the off brand. <laughs> <laughs> And we also have Kroof. And they don't call it macaroni, they just call it cheese noodles. <laughs> Crap cheese noodles. I mean, they passed the expiration date, but, uh, you know. Crap cheese noodles sounds like a curse that our Joel would say. Contains your daily use of vitamin H. <laughs> I think I'm about to blow your mind here, because I'm like, oh shit, there's a guy on the other side of the room. And he's got a weapon that he's using as a sniper rifle. How will I get to him? Oh, ow, ow, ow. Shit, what can I do? What can I use? Did he just... What? Oh, he ducked. Okay. I still, what do I do, man? You I'm can give him Kroof macaroni and cheese. Wait. We'll use it. It actually works well, oh my god. <clears throat> well, I haven't been crafting more of these. <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> Holy <laughs> fucking shit. <laughs> fucking smoke bombs. <laughs> but I can't find him, shit. So it don't work that well. <laughs> I guess it got me closer. Well, where'd he go? Is he hiding? Oh shit. <laughs> Ah, my helmet's useless. Sorry. Ora, ora, ora. I win. <laughs> pop go the weasel. Say the weasel go pop. Now that I cleared out all the soldiers, might as well make some more things that go boom. No. Saint what? Saint Mars, I don't know. Saint so Mary's? I, I could hide from these guys, but they deserve this. I have a Saint Mary's in my town. I love he's walking around. Wait a minute. Hey, <laughs> walking through the fire. Yeah, so I'm not a huge fan of that. I just, it's almost taking like a whole clip to take down one dude. All right, nail bomb. Perfect. Really, there's no reason to hold on to supplies anymore at this point. <laughs> Just use them all. Yeah, I mean, might as well. Fire every gun you have. Oh, shit. <laughs> I thought he's dead. <laughs> Went the wrong way. I hope you like your bathroom kind of hot. Right in the face. Looks like I kept it wet. <laughs> now you'll keep it up. I mean, I kept it warm shit. Uh. <laughs> I kept it I kept it dry. <laughs> <laughs> shit, I did it wrong. All right, we made it past this floor. Now we just have to go up to Ellie's floor. Turn around. Okay. Punishment chair for you. Okay, it looked too cinematic, and I thought he was going to get attacked. He gets shot at the end. Oh, man. <laughs> Agent Dr. Joel. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey. Serge's recorder. I guess you won't be able to hear this. Damn PS4 controller playing all the audio. I forget <laughs> it. Wait, I meant, I meant to listen. Oh shit, forget it. <laughs> Is there anyone? I want to check if anyone was here. I wasn't going to get murdered while listening to a tape. April 28th. Marlene was right. The girl's infection is nothing I've ever seen. The cause of her immunity is uncertain. As we've seen in all past Thank God cases, we can't read. <laughs> I'm just reading for those who can't. <laughs> We're just... There's a chance. Travis, think about it. This is a video up on YouTube, which is on the internet, which requires you to use text. Have you heard of dyslexia? 
Have you heard of Joel? He can't read either. <laughs> you can't handle the truth. <laughs> Find the the, the bays of R Raylan. We we will we'll ride the the, the pelicans. Joel, out you're listening to it, you idiot. Oh, the wandering wastelands, leaving home and friends with all your best friends, and that friend knows a friend too. And I put a sack of a hundred men and women into a blender. <laughs> Very last thing. Might as well, fuck it. <laughs> and then it's like, yay, achievement for actually making one. <laughs> My stubbornness <laughs> was keeping me from an achievement. Way to go. I'm gonna assume there are people will be coming down this hall. <laughs> I like that shot. That's some weird looking surgery. <laughs> They're doing shadow puppets at you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready for the reading adventure part two? Yes. <laughs> Always. <laughs> we built our city on rock and roll. <laughs> Shut up, Joel. <laughs> Stop, <laughs> you idiot. Ellie never made it. They're even talking. Marlene pretty much is also like, I hate these soldiers. Failed you, Anna. Hmm. They're just assuming that because the whole uh, Firefly crew died, that Ellie must have died as well. Because who would protect her? Those smugglers wouldn't. April 28th. I keep hearing rumors of this crazy guy. I saw this crazy guy and a young girl, and I heard he was really crazy. Now we got Marlene's thoughts. You get a sense from reading her journal that she's doing it partially out of a... to feel good about all the people that have been sacrificed in the process of doing this, which kind of makes sense. Same time, you get this kind of pride feeling about it, too. She wants to be the one who finds a way to save the world sort of thing. Which is partially selfish and unselfish, because she's kind of realizing that sacrifices that have taken place for the Firefly's cause wouldn't have died in vain if they found a cure. Damn it. Again, it's a gray area, for sure. Well, clearly, if I run down the hallway straight, you're going to get torn to shreds. <laughs> spring break! Well, we got to follow him. <laughs> it is spring, after all. Nude run. <laughs> I do one of those, like, riding cartwheels past it. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Shit. What the fuck? <laughs> Richard, what are you doing? It looks like you got killed by a flashlight. I wonder why these sticks are on him. Ah, they're just growths. <laughs> he was infected, shoots him. Don't worry, he's just Groot. I thought they'd run down the hall, but they're being smarter than that. They're, they know I have to go that way either way. So I'll use the back halls. Hey, hey, hey. Worth upgrading the bow and arrow. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Claire, we're in the dentist office. No, hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> okay, there it is. Hoy, hoy, hoy. I smell something. Clearly, he's going to be in the office. <laughs> it looks like he fired a rocket. Stealthily beat him with my fist. Better hide. Hope nobody heard that. 
<laughs> He's literally just screaming. Ah! Here's a trick for you, motherfucker. <laughs> I thought there was gonna be a glass, like just part of the window right there, so it just bounces back to Joel. Hit back in his hand. <laughs> mm. Dunk. Oh, well, all right. I'm trying to get their attention. Be like, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Keep searching, it's gotta be right here somewhere. Let's split up again, that worked. That is the classic Scooby-Doo tactic. Why don't we just stick together? No, that's stupid. Stop being stupid. <laughs> Smacks him for bringing it up. How dare you. I think there's like two or three guys left, so. Nothing that Jill can't handle. Look, we never find the guy until we split up. Let's just get it out of the way. I got plenty of flame juice, might as well use it. <laughs> Just run up to them. Ah! Stealth! <laughs> I don't like the machine gun, fuck it. Flamethrower and bow and arrow, perfect combination. Assault rifle, thank you. It kind of sucks. <laughs> the only bonus is you get a lot of that ammunition here. That was super loud. <laughs> Here's some reloading gun. Uh, I like to imagine he has like a bag of potato chips and he's chewing on them slowly. Really open mouth. <laughs> <laughs> he opens them and it echoes. You hear that? Listen. And he's like looking back and forth and slowly puts the chip into his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I love how he said a little quick. I'll send him a bitch. <laughs> send a bitch, motherfucker. <laughs> Now, if you had a bunch of explosives, this part would be very simple, because you just run down the hallway throwing explosives and kill everybody. Which is the way I did the first time I played it. And you didn't do it this time because... I ran out of explosives. Oh. What you got? <laughs> I got a nickel! <laughs> Every day, you and the damn nickel. Three guys, three bullets. It doesn't get funnier the more you say it, Tim. <laughs> Who will go out first? Oh, shit. To the spring dance. The cat's in the cradle and the... <laughs> Forget it. Really? That's quieter. It is. They didn't see me. Oh, no, he did, though. Will I now? I cost a lot of money. <laughs> we use money still? I knocked over his Dr. Pepper. You'll pay for that! <laughs> <laughs> I got a brick. I'll hit him with this. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Aim. Perfect throw and everything. I agree. I guess the, I guess the brick is pretty nice. <laughs> I was going to be so happy if it was a one-hit kill. No, I liked it more like this. Shatter on his hands like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Even though they're all dead. They can't move something with the wheels. Before we go in, let's look around a little bit more. Are you ready for reading part three? <laughs> 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 Marley's recorder is just the instrument. Just starts blowing like a sax. See, this is the one that kind of gives away that this is like all everything they've been working for to cure this disease, which is a noble thing, but at the same time you get the sense where it's just like a super pride thing for her too. I learned that my great 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 ancestor was named Daisy Fitzgerald. <laughs> she was in some kind of floating city and people say I look like her. She said something about the bears and the sea and I didn't really get it.
No, this is literally this is her whispering into the recorder. I miss you. <laughs> Not that I liked you or anything. I just I, just, I miss you. And it was the name of Ellie's mother. We don't know too much about Ellie's family at all. All right, time to go save Ellie. I was hoping you would. I was hoping you would encounter a vending machine. Oh no! It's a really big shadow. Doctor Joel's in the house. What are you doing in here? I won't let you take her. This is our future. Think of. <laughs> <laughs> There's no time to think about that shit. <laughs> Joel, shut the hell up. Don't worry, Ellie, we'll be fine. Come on, baby girl. I got you. I got you. <clears throat> oh, shit. <clears throat> Time to run to get the hell out of here. I should have. <laughs> You can't actually die on this part. You can? Yeah. I got you. Come on. In fact, I'll show you how. No! Let go of her! Let go of her! No! Oh. You're under the soldiers, you die, basically. Come on. Nah, that'd be stupid. All right, let's do it for real. Oh. Instead, you turn this corner. You go through lockers. We're okay. We're okay. We're okay. Dropper, now. I got him in my flight. Loser says what? That's my heart. <laughs> All right, Ellie, I'm gonna open the door with you, okay? Hope you don't mind. You can't save her. Even if you get her out of here, then what? How long before she's torn to pieces by a pack of clickers? That is, if she hasn't been raped and murdered first. It ain't for you to decide. It's what she'd want. And you know it. Look. You can still do the right thing here. She won't feel anything. Then he turns around and he do the whole thing over again. <laughs> it's the brakes. Nah. Uh, what the hell am I wearing? Just take it easy. Drugs are still wearing off. Got a hell of a party. What happened? Uh, it, the hospital know. broke. Turns out there's a whole lot more like you, Ellie. People that are immune. There's dozens, actually. I ain't done them a damn bit of good, neither. They've actually... They've stopped looking for a cure. I'm taking this home. Sorry. (laughs) 
Wait! Let me go! Please. You just come after her. Should be a straight shot through here. All right. It's actually kind of pretty, ain't it? Yeah. Uh, I don't know how to go through. Okay. <laughs> So weird to see this from the other side. I don't think I ever told you, but uh, Sarah and I used to take hikes like this. I think uh, I think the two of you would have been would have been good friends. I think you really would have liked. I know she'd have liked you. I bet I would have. That that said, yeah. But, That's what uh, she's really thinking. <laughs> further now. Back in Boston, back when I was bitten, I wasn't alone. My best friend was there, and she got bit too. We didn't know what to do, so she says, let's just wait it out. You know, we can be all poetic and just lose our minds together. I'm still waiting for my turn. Ellie. Her name was Riley, and she was the first to die. And then it was Tess. And then Sam. None of that is on you. No, you don't understand. I struggled for a long time with surviving. And you... No matter what... You keep finding something to fight for. Now, I know that's not what you want to hear right now. Swear though, to me. Swear to me that everything that you've said about the Fireflies is true. I swear. That's the end of Sleeping Dogs. So Sleep, Sleeping what? Dogs. Oh shit! <laughs> I thought Night Dog got distracted. <laughs> I thought Night Dog as soon as I saw that shit. <laughs> it's the end of The Last of Us. Yeah. <laughs> the end of Sleeping Dogs again. <laughs> yeah, that's the twist. That's just Sleeping Dog. Uh, but yes, that's the end of The Last of Us. So, what did you guys think of the ending? Um. Well, it didn't end like I thought it would. What'd you think was gonna happen? 
I thought Joel was gonna die, and then she they would have had like one last talk or whatever, and then he would have ended up dying in the process, and then she they get the vaccination off of her, and then the world is fine, kind of, but Joel's dead. I thought there would be a point where Ellie woke up, and then she would actually say to Joel, no, I want this, and he would just have to deal with it. It's a kind of an interesting combination of themes with the overall story. There's a big part of it that is about kind of deciding the good amongst the many against the good of the few. But I think a bigger part of the story is how people handle the burdens of the things they've done in their lives. Because it's pretty much revolved around these characters' decisions based on past actions. When it came to Joel, because of the loss of his daughter, he didn't want to lose anyone ever again. So he took a lot of those things hard and was unwilling to accept people and let him into his heart again because he didn't want to lose them again. So he did everything he could once he found someone that he loved to let her go. So even despite the world potentially being saved, he said no and decided to save her. Ellie would have been okay to be killed, but not necessarily because she wanted to cure the world, but there's a big part of her that wanted to escape from the things she felt like was her fault in the past. She handled the responsibility of the loss of her friend and the fact that she lived through it. She held on to the death of Sam and to Tess and she, she related it all to her. So a part of her was thinking that by sacrificing herself in something noble, she could get away from that. Same thing when it came to uh, Marlene. She wanted to escape the past things that have happened to her and the things she's done by saying, look at what I did. I've done something great to weigh out all the shit that I've done wrong. So with the big question to yourself is what are you willing to do to make up for the things you've done in the past that you felt like are wrong? And in this case, the characters themselves decided on more selfish routes that, hey, I want to save her. I love her and I want her to be able to live a life that's personally... It's a selfish goal, especially for Joel. It felt like a very selfish thing. But at the same time, you feel like a part of it is adult wisdom. The fact that he's lived a more experienced life than Ellie has and said, look, you might have to deal with the fact that you've done some terrible things, but that's not a reason to die. You need to live on and find other things to live for. And he learned that by going through this journey with Ellie. So it's this kind of interesting symbiotic relationship between them. but a lot of people actually complained about the ending of that. A lot of people r resented Joel for the decision to sacrifice the world's well-being to save one girl. But as I said before, you can't necessarily say you'd make the other decision based on what you'd initially think. It's yourself in the moment. Would you sacrifice the person you love most to save the world, or would you sacrifice the world to save the person you love most? It's not an easy question. It's not easy to answer either, truly. And that question was presented to themselves in a very realistic and dark way, and it affected people. That's why this, this game has gotten such ageless rapport of being really, really good. What'd you think of the game overall? I was in for the ride from the beginning through to the end. Same. I really liked it. Although my question is, like, would them operating on Ellie and getting the surgery, would, have, would that actually have guaranteed them a cure? No. Like, because for all we knew, that was up in the air, too. What if they thought, oh, we got the thing and she has the thing and then they operate on her and oh, wait, it didn't work. She's gone. That could have been a big possibility. And even just from the decision that Joel ultimately made from a storytelling perspective, which of those are you going to remember the ending that you expect that's ultimately at least ambiguously happy or one that you didn't really see coming and makes you think of a character in a sort of a like even a darker light than you originally had at the start would you ever expect joel to really allow something like that to happen like, would that be in his character he lost his most important person in his, in his life at the very beginning of the game do you think he would do that again there's no way i feel like even if he didn't grow closer to ellie he would have done it like he would have like drop her off at the hospital, drive away, and then stop and be like, I gotta get that kid, you know? Yeah. 
I like games like this, and it's very hard to find things in any kind of form medium that develop a character in such a good way. This game needed to be a long journey, because it gave you a better understanding, and it let the characters develop in a more natural way. I did get the sense that the combat, it's the problem, same thing with Bioshock Infinite. I had a definitely interesting story that I wanted to see through to the end, but I was doing the same thing so much from start to the end without much variation. It's true. I, I felt like um, the way that it was initially shown was that you could you're de you would be able to decide how you approach certain situations. So if you saw a big group of people, you didn't have to fight them. You could just walk past them. And there's a few situations where that occurred, but more often than not, the way the stage and how this, it was set up was very dictated. It was very much you follow the path that they've set for you. But it's hard to make a cine cinematographic game unless you do that. Um, but I kind of wish you had a little bit more freedom in how you handle those certain things. But honestly, when you play the combat, it's fun. And, you know, the difference in playing a character like Ellie, who's a little more stealth based, was definitely a fun change. But yeah, with a game that's so story oriented, I don't know how else they would approach that. I found the scenes where you weren't fighting to be considerably more interesting. But that was the... I think that's the uh, naughty dog kind of going in there and going, ah, we gotta have combat. It's like Uncharted. Yeah. As much as I love Uncharted, after a while, it's just shoot, shoot, punch, kill. Pretty much. Like, my favorite parts of Uncharted is when you're doing, like, a chase scene or you're, like, gripping onto something. Like, the opening to Uncharted 2 is, like, cemented it for me. Or when you're learning about this temple kind of thing and you're going yeah. deeper into it and things like that. Those parts were considered more interesting. Like solving the puzzles and shit, but then when it's like, oh, time to shoot and kill everything is just great. It's just like every other game. It's funny, like, I, I spent some time watching um, reaction videos of other people that played this, that were playing this game and getting to this point. And when it came down to the point where they said, we're, we're you know, Firefly is going to sacrifice Ellie to save the world. 100% of them went, no, fuck that, we're saving Ellie. <laughs> this, this game makes you care for her. because she was written very well. And she's likable. And she had the joke book. Which made her even more likable. <laughs> so that's the end of The Last of Us, but, but, not completely done yet. When we beat the game, the opening menu usually shows just the window, but we also have Ellie's knife there now, so they change when you actually beat it. Uh, but we got one more thing that we need to do in this particular playthrough. And that is to play the Left Behind DLC. If you remember at the very end of the very last cinematic, she mentioned that she had a best friend that she was with when she got bitten. We get to see the story of when that happened. So we get to see the prequel to what led to this particular part. But that will be coming eventually, so you'll see. That'll probably just be a couple parts long, but yeah, I'm touching the DLC, and you'll be able to check that out soon. But uh, hope you enjoyed the main story of The Last of Us, not Sleeping Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just like a Freudian slip when it comes to that kind of thing. <laughs> Plus, it's on Naughty Dog, so I don't have a Sleeping Dog. Yeah, Brain for it. <laughs> I just love how confidently you said that, and that was Sleeping Dogs, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> My brain does not work. <laughs> I don't remember seeing Wei Shen once. Yep. There's one last thing I could say to you, Ellie. It's this. Mama me, mama me. <laughs> it's this. My name is Winston. <laughs> Take care of Peggy. <laughs> but imagine that you went down the elevator to get out of there and the gun points up at you and it's Wei Shen. <laughs> I don't think my heart is ready for that crossover. <laughs> I think you just, I just hear, just Yoshi choking on the other side. Ah, ah, can't handle. <laughs> Seriously, I do hope you guys enjoyed that playthrough. That game is, uh, it was one of my favorite games for definitely for that year it came out. And I enjoy playing it multiple times. It's just such a neat little story. I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. Although that makes me think, are they going to do like a sequel? Or... There are rumors? Because it kind of looks like, they kind of want to keep this like a standalone game. Which I appreciate. But like, they kind of left the ending pretty ambiguous, so they could easily be like, The Last of Us 2, The Last of Us. Or... Well, what they did, they ended with that whole thing with Ellie saying okay as they're heading to that town. They did a, uh, it was like a live play 
of The Last of Us scene where they got like Troy Baker and the actress that played uh, Ellie and things like that to perform the stage thing, a scene that would have came after, at least at least maybe a year or so afterwards, where you're plainly aware that Ellie knows that Joel's lying, but they just, they've settled and they live now in that town. Mm. All right. So I feel like their story has pretty much come to an end, or at least Joel's story has definitely come to an end. Because like, I feel like if they're going to do a sequel, they're probably just going to do it with some other person. Or at least maybe adult Ellie. I think it should stay the way it is, though. Me too. None of games stay one entry. I think some people have enough clout to get away with it, though. And I think, <laughs> so- I think Sony would be willing just to fund one version of that and then just be like, ah, we got Uncharted, we got that one we can milk. Like, there's a lot of a series that, like, don't even get picked up unless it's a franchise. So it's pretty lucky that Naughty Dog is good enough to, you know, release this sort of game. And it did really well. Like it yeah. sold a lot and it got rave reviews and game of the year nods and things like that. So it was a success for a standalone, which is pretty rare. It just shows how good it was. And it's one of the few games I played through a Let's Play that didn't run into a glitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had one visual glitch, didn't we? Uh... Like a background disappeared briefly. But that was it. I don't even remember. Was that like in the game or? Yeah. Like as he was looking around, the geometry seemed to disappear for a second. Oh, Wells, I didn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you in the guys in the next. Let's play whatever the hell that might be. Anyways, guys, Arcadia. And well. And well. And way.